Thanks a bit, Maya. About 100 years ago, coenzyme 1 was discovered as a substance in the human body. Now, 100 years later, there is this small but highly effective pill we can take that contains coenzyme 1 or NADH. How did you discover this therapeutic effect? I discovered it together with my father in 1978. NADH is biological hydrogen and highly unstable. When you leave it lying on the table overnight, it will be oxidized and degraded the next day. My father discovered the classic L-DOPA therapy against Parkinson's disease, a type of palsy many of us are sadly familiar with. Many of his patients came from abroad. Especially Americans tend to take way too much medicine up to the point where the medicine loses its effect. So he said to me, Georgie boy, I paid for your studies of biochemistry. Go think of something. Now, as a biochemist, I knew that NADH is needed for L-DOPA to be produced in the brain. I got my hands on one of the largest laboratories in Vienna, where plenty of NADH was available in vials. I gave it to him, and when he used it on the first patient, the effect was phenomenal. We have developed a new therapeutic concept. The stimulation of the endogenous L-DOPA biosynthesis in the brain of Parkinsonian patients by NADH. The patient has difficulties in getting up from his seat and in walking. He moves forward in small, tripping steps. Initially, the patient was hardly able to walk, but an hour later, he walked and jumped and ran around. One hour after infusion of 25 milligrams of NADH, the patient's disability improved considerably. The mimic was more animated, the pushing and jumping ability was incomparably better to that before the NADH treatment. His walking was remarkably improved. The left screen shows his walking before, the right screen one hour after NADH treatment. This patient had received an infusion, but what happens next? The patient might be perfectly capable of walking home, but what does he do the next day? That's exactly what my father said. He said, Georgie boy, now I need you to make pills out of this which turned out to be easier said than done. We admixed the NADH with milk sugar and pressed it into tablets. But after no more than four weeks, we were amazed to find that all the NADH had oxidized and turned ineffective. So, to make a long story short, it took us another four and a half years of hard research to develop a stable oral and bioavailable form of NADH, which is now available in the form of NADH rapid energy pills. Someone wrote that NADH could make people happy. How do these pills make us happy? Dopamine is also referred to as the happy hormone. It is significantly reduced in people who suffer from Parkinson, depression, or chronic fatigue. We know that NADH stimulates L-DOPA and subsequently dopamine. In other words, NADH promotes production of the happy hormone. This is why many depressed patients report that the first thing they feel after taking it is a euphoric effect. When Arvid Carlson was awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine, he expressly mentioned your father. How come? The two of them used to work together for many years in the late 1950s. When Carlson injected rabbits with a substance to lower their blood pressure, their ears would fold forward. When he administered them L-DOPA, the ears went up again. Only the ears, unfortunately. <laughs> My father was a fast thinker, and he immediately thought, that should be helpful for my Parkinson patients. He acquired L-DOPA from Hoffmann La Roche and injected it into a woman who was lying in bed paralyzed. An hour later, she jumped out of bed and walked. When Carlson was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2000, he pointed out in his speech that the defining discovery had been made by Professor Walter Birkmeier, my father. Your father was a neurologist and psychiatrist, and he had a couple of very famous patients. Quite a few celebrities have Parkinson, including Muhammad Ali and Mao. Mao Zedong's personal physician invited my father to China. My father accepted, 
but he didn't get to see Mao in person. He had to give the medicine to the personal physician, Dr. Li, who would then administer it to the patient. Dr. Li would later mention in his memoirs how a doctor from Vienna had delivered good medicine to the great party leader in 1947. After rendering the substance stable, which was an achievement in itself, you face the next challenge of placing the drug on the market, facing rigid provisions like a shelf life of at least two years. How many tests did you conduct? And how many scientific studies did you publish to prove that your NADH products are effective? It took us four and a half years to measure the drug stability. In addition, to meet the requirement of a two-year shelf life, we had to test the drug for two years, obviously. Also, we did toxicology tests to find out how much of our medicine an individual will tolerate. We found that a person could take 50 rapid energy pills a day for six months without experiencing any side effects. But then they must be able to fly. Not quite. In the final approval period for our Alzheimer dementia drug in Britain, authorities required us to test for all kinds of things, including safety parameters. We had to perform these tests with two different types of animals, a dog and a rat. And even dogs, with a lower body mass than humans, were shown to tolerate 50 such pills a day for six months. The only side effect British researchers found was that male dogs were, um, as they put it, amorously nicer, meaning they developed an enhanced sexual drive towards the females. Now, that's a side effect I can live with. <laughs> What you might not be able to live with so well is that there are quite a number of copycats and counterfeits of your product on the market, resulting in frequent angry comments by customers on Amazon or the like, who have unwittingly ended up with a rip-off. Why is that so? The plagiarists believe they can reproduce the development that took us four and a half years in 14 days by simply buying NADH, admixing it with some powder, and pressing it into tablets. What they fail to recognize, though, is that NADH is very unstable. They might use the correct amount, but after four weeks, as we demonstrated, the NADH within the tablet will degrade, and the customer will no longer experience the effect. What are your future hopes for NADH? I hope it continues to help many people, as it does now, and even more. The longer we maintain people's health with the aid of NADH, the more money we save public health funds and governments. Let me give you an example. America spends, or may I say, wastes, $100 billion every year on demented Alzheimer patients. If the illness could be postponed by one year in 10% of these people, America would save $10 billion. And there is new evidence that a nutritional supplement can actually help you beat short-term sleep deprivation. Our Dr. Tim Johnson will be here with some uh, details. It's good news for us. The TV show Good Morning America covered NADH for 15 straight minutes in connection with sleep deprivation. With so many mistakes happening due to fatigue, I take it NADH would be highly useful, even to younger people. We conducted this study together with Cornell University in New York. Healthy volunteers aged 30 to 40 were kept awake for 24 hours, not by having the night guard tapping them on their shoulders and telling them not to fall asleep, of course, but by EEG-controlled sleep deprivation. After 24 hours of waking, one group was administered NADH, while the other received sugar pearls. Without NADH, the brain capacity was reduced to 50% after 24 hours of sleep deprivation, which is about the same as when you have a blood alcohol level of 0.15%. But those who took NADH after these 24 hours showed levels three times better than after a good night's sleep. That doesn't mean you shouldn't sleep. It only means that if you have a sleep deficit, you can use NADH as a remedy. 
heavy doubters would argue this could all be due to the placebo effect. How many of your tests involve placebos? We conducted a variety of studies at Freiburg University, at Georgetown University, in Vienna and several other places, and we always included placebo controls. If you want to comply with good clinical practice, it's a requirement to feed one group with placebos and the other with your product. Then, following a so-called washout phase, the two groups are swapped. We clearly found that placebos have no effect. In Freiburg, we even tested it in Olympic athletes whose muscles showed a 10% increase in ATP energy after 30 days. You can only imagine what this means for a marathon runner. Professor Birkmeier, thank you so much for taking the time.